Yeah, so the best example I can give for everybody, from beginners to advanced guys, is the way that I started to learn this stuff. I was a blues guy through and through at heart. Now you're talking, I started playing at six, and at 12 I started playing gigs and clubs. So I was playing blues already, you know, for hours and hours on gigs with adults. And I used to get frustrated because I only knew, and I knew it all over the neck, but that was it, you know? And I was trying to figure out what else to do. And a gentleman at a music store, a friend of mine, he was much, much, I was probably 13, he was 65, and uh, he was a jazzer. And he said, man, you gotta get some new stuff in there. He's like, you're, you're young, I know, but let's, let's get you on the right path, you know? So he had me play rhythm for him, and he had a, he had a plan in mind. So he goes, play me, play me a shuffle in A and play rhythm. So I went. The second I did that, he stopped me. And I said, what? And he goes, what'd you just do when you played rhythm? I said, you mean that little half step thing to get down to the four? And he's like, yeah, play that in your solo. I said, wait a minute, I don't, I don't know what you mean, play that in your solo. And he went. And it was a little light bulb, and then he went. I was like, man, I think I get it. And he goes, dude, I'm just playing this. I was like, I get it, I get it. You just arpeggiated, basically, that chromatic thing that I did in my rhythm. And I was like frothing at the mouth, like, oh my God, what else, you know? So he goes, well, what chord are you on then? And I'm, he said, I said, well, we're on the four. And he goes, well, what do you do when you play rhythm on the four? I said, well, sometimes, halfway through, I'll go diminish. And I didn't even know what diminish was. I probably played it like this. And he said, well, why don't you play that in your solo? And I didn't know a diminished scale or anything like, so, so he just showed me as simple as. And I was like, okay, light bulb again. Like, I see what you're doing there. And he said, what else can you do? And I said, I don't know, man. I don't, that's all I play on rhythm. And he goes, well, you can go four minor. And I said, what, four minor? And he's like, hey, don't, you, don't you listen to the Beatles? Don't you listen to West Montgomery? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, haven't you ever heard a song that goes like this? I was like, yeah, and he's like, even if the band doesn't do that, you can do that, because it's a beautiful resolve, you know? And he's like, so check this out. There's this Ray Charles song where the sax player is playing over the four, and it goes to the four minor, and he plays this. I was like, light bulb again, like, I get it. I totally get it. What's next? And he said, he said, well, what chord is next? I said, the five, and he goes, put the two. Make it a two, five, one turnaround. I didn't know what that was. So I said, what's a two, five, one turnaround? He goes, that's when you replace those two chords with a two minor to a five dominant and back to the one. And he played me this beautiful. And I was like, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. And it's when I realized that not only were the jazz guys playing this exotic stuff that fit over every chord. So it was like, here's your A, you have all these a million things you can play over A, but what about what you play to get from A to D, or from D to E, or back from E to A? And that's when I realized that's what they were doing. They were not only playing all this stuff that I didn't know yet, and I didn't even know yet, and didn't need to know, it was they were connecting the chords, and I didn't know how to do that yet. And that was by using chromatics, diminished, and turnarounds, because those things exist literally to get from one chord to the next. And that, that was the start of it for me, was that type of exercise. Obviously I grew up loving, you know, the old school blues, but then once I started getting into jazz, I found myself liking guys who played with an edge, you know, so I was digging Robin Ford and Larry Carlton and John Schofield and guys like that. And so they would play, you know, with distortion and sometimes delay and stuff, but be playing those same lines that I was practicing from Charlie Parker song or something, you know? So I would hear Robin play stuff like on a shelf. And it was 
like a mix of all that stuff that I'd been working on. You know, the chromatics and the diminished to connect the licks and then, you know, a few other ideas over certain chords. And it was like, but played with an aggression and also with still that blues aggression where, you know, you don't have to always say all those things. It's okay to go. <laughs> mix it up, you know, because I'm trying, the way I think about it is with that type of stuff, the, vo the out stuff or the flashy stuff or the harmonically sophisticated stuff, I want to hear it so bad, I'll hold it back, not purposely, but it's like I'll hear something, but I don't quite feel like I have to play it. I want to hear it so bad that I'll play blues, 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 blues until it just, it has to come out. I hear this lick right now and hear it, it has to happen. And that, that's the way I think about that stuff. For me, the bulk of the country thing was the technique. Because once I found Danny Gatton, it was like life changing because you cannot play any of his things flat pick. It's like you have to hybrid pick that stuff. He was, you know, he was playing banjo and stuff like that, but he played with picking fingers always. And when I start, excuse me, started to learn those techniques, I found that naturally they were making their way over to my, my regular playing. You know what I mean? And that, that came from trying to play things like, like this, like. So just, just trying to get those type of licks. You can't play that flat pick, it's just not possible. So as I started developing that technique, then I noticed it was kind of happening all the time. When I played blues, I'd be playing. And it was like I, it, it was when I, that was when I started to feel like, okay, now I might be finding my voice, which is a mix of like this love of real blues and you know, that's where my heart lies. But then with this, this technique that I was learning in the countryside, and then with this vocabulary that I was learning from the jazz side and taking all those things and kind of trying to find my own voice.